Toki, Mian Misali. Kulupu ni pi sitelen tawa la sina kin kama sona e Toki Pona. Ni li sitelen tawa napa one. Toki Pona li seme. This is the first video in a 12 part series about Toki Pona, a minimalist language created by Jan Sonia, first published in the year 2001. In this series, I will be giving an overview of how the language works, as described in the two official books. With a growing community of thousands of speakers, Toki Pona is one of the most popular constructed languages out there, and in my opinion, that's because learning Toki Pona is a lot of fun. It's a language with less than 200 words. In fact, there are fewer words in Tokipona's core vocabulary than there are first-generation Pokémon. This restrictive vocabulary means that when speaking Tokipona, talking about any complex subject involves describing what that thing is in simpler terms. As Jan Sonia has said, if English is a thick novel, then Tokipona is a haiku. The name Tokipona means good language. The first word in the name is Toki, which generally means communicate or communication. You can also use Toki as an interjection. Saying Toki on its own is a way of announcing that communication is happening, as a way of starting a conversation. Naturally, this is the most common way to say hello in Tokipona. All content words in Tokipona have multiple functions like this. This is a very important part of how the language is able to work with such a small vocabulary. As you learn more words, you can start to develop more of an intuition for how these functions are related to each other. It's important to remember that these multiple functions are not the same thing as a word having multiple meanings. All of of these ideas encapsulated by Toki fall under the large umbrella of communication. It's one single idea, but it corresponds to a large number of different English words because English words are categorically more specific and precise than Toki Pona words. The second word is Pona, which means good. Adjectives go after nouns in Toki Pona, which is the opposite of how they work in English. So in a two-word noun phrase like Toki Pona, the first word functions as a noun and the second functions as an adjective. So Toki Pona means good language. You sometimes also see Pona translated as simple. This is part of the philosophy philosophy of Tokipona. In this language, the way to describe any given concept isn't a question of knowing what the word for the concept is, like it is in most other languages. Instead, figuring out how to talk about something means figuring out what you believe that thing is, from your own subjective point of view. Because of this, Pona doesn't just mean good, it means good in my own subjective opinion. Describing something as Pona is a way of saying it's something you personally like. So if you don't personally think simplicity is one of the concepts that falls under the Pona umbrella, then for you, it doesn't. But since Tokipona Tokipona is a language where its simplicity is its main appeal, anyone who speaks Tokipona is pretty likely to personally subjectively enjoy things that are simple. So that's why Pona can be used to mean simple. The word Ike can be used similarly. It can mean bad, evil, or wrong in a moral, emotional, objective, or subjective sense. This type of broad meaning isn't particularly uncommon, all of this applies just as well to the English word bad, but it's part of the philosophy of the language that applies similarly to pretty much every other word. Sorry, right, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's talk about phonology. Tokipona uses nine consonants and five vowels. Due to the small phonemic inventory, each phoneme has a wide range of acceptable pronunciations. For the most part, these consonants are pronounced the way they are in English. The exception is the letter J, which represents a palatal semi-vowel, y, like the English letter Y. So this word, which means person, is pronounced like yan with a y. This is the value the letter J has in the International Phonetic Alphabet, which is why Tokipona uses it this way. The five vowels in Tokipona are the standard five vowel system. E, U, E, O, A. This means vowels are pronounced the way they are in languages like Spanish, Japanese, or Swahili. Like consonants, there is room for variation with how they can be pronounced. And really, that's pretty much all you need to remember when you're reading Tokipona text, at least for now. J is pronounced like English Y, and the vowels are the standard five vowel system. There's like two other things you'll eventually need to know, but they're not relevant yet. Oh, right, one other thing. Tokipona only uses capital letters for names, and not at the start of sentences. I generally avoid capitalizing the starts of sentences in English for aesthetic purposes, but in Tokipona, that's normal. The only time Tokipona uses capital the letters is for proper names, as in Jan Sonia or Jan Misli. That's enough about that for now. I think it's time to introduce one of the most fundamental pieces of Tokipona grammar, the particle li. Li is a very important word. You can basically think of it as a verbifying particle. It marks that whatever comes after it is being used as a verb. So, for example, we can make the sentence yan li toki, where li is marking that toki is a verb. This sentence means something like a person talks. However, this translation adds extra information that is not present in the original sentence. Yan could be translated as a person, people, the person, the people, someone, humanity, and so on. Likewise, litoki could be translated as talks, talked, is talking, has talked, etc. Some would call the amount of ways a simple sentence like this can be translated into English ambiguous, but I'd argue that it isn't ambiguous. It's vague. It's not that it could mean any of these individual sentences and there's no way to figure out which one it's supposed to mean. It's that the one thing this sentence means is broader than any possible English translation you could give. 
Like, the English sentence, she hit the man with an umbrella, is ambiguous, because it could either mean that she used an umbrella to hit the man, or that the man she hit is the one who has an umbrella. It could mean either of those things separately, and it's unclear which one it is without additional context. However, it's also unclear what color the umbrella is, or what her age is relative to the man she hit, or what time of day it was when this happened, or how many people saw it, and an infinite number of other possible factors. I'd say that this is not ambiguous, it's just information that isn't specified. It's not ambiguous, it's just fuzzy. Anyway, Togipona doesn't have the verb to be. To express the idea that something is something else, you just put that into the verb spot marked with li. For example, to say a person is good, you would say yan li pona. Don't forget to include li. Without li, yan pona on its own just means a good person. It's a noun phrase rather than a complete sentence. Side note, because pona means good in the sense that I personally like it, yan pona can be more accurately translated as someone I like. So yan pona is the most common way to say friend in toki pona. Another example, toki pona means a good language, but toki li pona is a full sentence meaning a language is good or possibly communication is good. But remember, li isn't the verb here. Li is verbing the word that comes after it. Translated literally, yan li pona means something closer to a person goods, or a person is gooding. But in general, x li y is the way to say x is y in toki pona. This means that a sentence like yan li moku could mean either a person eats or a person is food. There are ways to work around this, but for the most part, this is something that can be inferred by context. Now that we know how verbs work, let's look at some other examples. Lape means sleep or rest. This is is actually cognate with the English word sleep, fun fact. And olin means love. As you can probably pick up by now, this is a broad sense of love that includes all the various meanings that the English word has. Now that we have some more verbs, let's move on to pronouns. Tokipona only has one third-person pronoun, ona. Unlike English third-person pronouns, the word ona does not imply any information about gender, number, or animacy. It's the single all-purpose third-person pronoun used for all your third-person pronoun needs. Of course, you can specify information about number and gender if you want, which will be covered in future videos, it's just that that information isn't baked into the pronoun itself. You can also use ona as a noun, as in ona li olin, or as an adjective, where it works like an English possessive pronoun, as in moku ona li pona. The first and second-person pronouns work very similarly. The first-person pronoun is me. Once again, this does not contain any grammatical number information, so it could be either singular or plural. And again, this can be used as an adjective, where it has the same function as an English possessive pronoun. And then, the second person pronoun is sina. There is an edge case in the grammatical rules of Tokipona for these two words. If the subject of a sentence is either just mi or just sina, then the particle li is not used. So rather than say sina li pona for you are good, you just say sina pona. Similarly, to say I am a person, that's mi yan, not mi li yan. This exception only applies if the subject is just me or Sina. If the subject is something like Moku Sina, your food, or Yampona me, my friend, you still need to use Lee. And you know what? I think that's enough grammatical concepts for now. There's a good amount more ground to cover, but that can wait for future videos. So alright, let's practice. First, I'll give a few sentences for you to translate into English. Let's start with a basic one. What does Olin Li Pona mean? Yes, that's exactly correct. Love is good. Don't worry if you didn't remember what olin means, you'll get the hang of it soon enough with some practice. Now, what do you think ona li lape means? Right, this sentence could mean they sleep, she is sleeping, he slept, or any variation of that idea. Remember, ona does not specify number or gender, and verbs don't mark tense. We'll learn more about specifying time with verbs in a later lesson. Okay, what about moku mi li ike? That's right, this sentence translates to my food is bad. Remember, you can use pronouns like me as adjectives too. Okay, now it's your turn. How would you say you love? Did you say sina olin? If so, good job. If you said sina li olin, remember you don't use li after me or sina as subjects. As we saw in the last example, this doesn't apply when they're adjectives, like in moku mi, since they aren't the subjects themselves. Okay, let's try a more complicated one. How would you say I am your friend? Need a hint? Remember, in Tokipona, a friend is a good person. Exactly, it's mi yampona sina. Congratulations! Just look at how much you've learned in such a short time. With Tokipona, as long as you can grasp a few basic concepts, you have the tools to express an extremely wide range of ideas. Well, that's all for today's lesson. I'll try to put out at least one of these Tokipona lessons a month until this series is over, alternating between these and my other videos. There's a lot of fun things to cover in the rest of the series, so needless to say, I'm a bit excited. Mitawa.